As you're seated, turn your Bibles with me to the gospel according to John. Gospel according to John chapter 5. Reading from verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stern of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, Who was cured? It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Somebody say it was Jesus. It was Jesus. Today I would like to talk to you from the topic, It Was Jesus. It was Jesus. As we can tell from the text, the location is Bethesda. Not only is it Bethesda, it is at a pool that is in Bethesda. And at this pool there are many sick, lame, People with all type of ailments come to this pool and the first one that steps in this pool is the one to be healed so there's a bunch of people gathering at a pool you can find one common thing amongst all of these people that gather at the pool something is wrong with all of them Something is wrong with every single one of these individuals that gather by the pool waiting to get in to be made well. But this very man who has been dealing with his illness for 38 years came every single day. And someone made it in before him every single time. The common thing with believers nowadays is that we find ourselves amongst people. True or not, each and every one of us find ourselves amongst people every single day. Not only do we find ourselves amongst people, we find ourselves amongst a certain group of people. And the reason why we find ourselves amongst a certain group of people because we usually surround ourselves with people that have a common interest or the same thing going on 
The, and the reason why some of us cannot get out of particular situations is because we find ourselves in common places and once we become too common, we become too comfortable. So just like this man was in this particular condition for 38 years, a lot of us in this very own building have been in the same condition for a certain amount of time because we are comfortable around certain people that have the same condition as us. We can find ourselves stuck in positions because we become too comfortable with the company we have around us. A, a few weeks ago, my, my older sister, she, she broke her leg. And after she broke her leg, or it was actually her ankle, she broke her ankle, and then she got an infection in her ankle because she had to have plates and screws and things of this nature placed in her ankle. So then she had to have maybe three surgeries in a week's amount of time. And each day, the doctors told her that she'll be coming out later so if it was sunday they'll tell us she'll be coming out monday if it was monday they said she'll be coming out tuesday if it was tuesday they said wednesday but she responded and said i need to get out of here soon because the longer i am here the more i become like the people in the hospital so she made up her mind that she will not stay surrounded around these people because once she becomes deaf or, 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 or is in that particular position for too long, she becomes like them. She becomes comfortable with her environment. And the reason why some of us cannot get some things broken off of us, the reason why some of us cannot be healed, cured, delivered, or whatever it may be, because we have found ourselves comfortable around people with the same problems. But I'm here to tell you today that you have to align yourself with people that are doing better with you than you, with people that are better than you, so you can be motivated to become better. But the moment you linger around people with problems, you become comfortable in your problems. So this man was in this condition for 38 years. 38 years. Verse 6 says, Jesus asked him, do you want to be made well? So for 38 years, he sat by the pool, waited for an angel to come stir up the water, and hopefully he can get in. But this time an angel didn't show up, Jesus shows up. Jesus asked the man, do you want to be made well? A man that is bound. A man that is hindered in his movement. A man that is restricted in his body. So while the enemy thinks that he can bind us, he can restrict us and he can limit us. There is one thing that the enemy does not have control over. Jesus asked him, do you want to be made well? And the man spoke. The man opened up his mouth. The man answered Jesus. The enemy comes into our lives trying to discourage us in our body many times. But the reason why some of us are not being healed is because we don't open our mouths the scripture tells us that there is life and death in our very own tongue why allow the enemy to not allow you to speak you have the ability to speak to your problems you have the ability to speak to your situations it does not matter how the enemy may have bind you how he may have restricted you how he may have crippled you you have the ability to open your mouth and speak we can no longer allow the enemy to control our mouths. We have to become uh, 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 believers that speak to every situation. But we become discouraged because the enemy took your job away, took your husband or wife away, and then you sit there in bed and pout and murmur and, 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 and complain 
instead of speaking speak to it Jesus shows up in our lives for us to be able to speak to situations what's the point of having God living within us if we cannot speak with his about with his power with his authority and his anointing what's the point of him living within us if he cannot speak through us what's the point of being in the presence of God if we cannot speak with the same power and anointing as God has so Jesus asked the man a question do you want to be made well do you want to be made well and the man says sir verse 7 sir I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up now this blew my mind when I read this when I got the revelation of this I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up but while I'm coming I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up but while I'm coming I have no man to put me in but while I'm coming how is it that the man is coming and still expecting someone to put him in? He's expecting someone to put him in the pool when he has the ability to move. He has the ability to move. He has the ability to move himself from one position to the next, but he needs help being put in the pool. Some of us, our motivation is limited. Our motivation for, for doing certain things is very limited. That when we get to a certain point, when we get to a certain position, when we've come so far, we give up because we say it's too hard. And then we expect someone else to help us go through a situation. We look for our, our fellow friend, a man. A man angels show up to stir the water but he's looking for a man to put him in angels show up and stir the water but he's looking for a man to put him in while he's still able to move himself you can't give up when you started if God told you this is what he's going to give you, why give up in the middle of it? And then ask man to help give you what God has promised you. No man could give you what God has promised you. The only person that can give you what God has promised is God. So hold on to the promises of God. Do not give up in the middle of fighting. Because when you're able to move, when you motivate yourself to continue to move, you will eventually fight find yourself in the position of promise that God has given to you you have to continuously push yourself even past the limits of what your body says that you can or can't do but because the enemy said that you can't have this I'm not gonna allow you to go this far we lose motivation because of how hard it gets because of how difficult it gets because of how rough the, the storm gets Jesus told his disciples to go to the other side a storm came but the command was still to go to the other side if you want to make it to the pool if you want your life to be changed it does not matter how rough it gets you gotta keep pushing yourself to get to that pool the text did not say that the man was not able to move. It said that while I'm coming, someone else gets in before me. You got to push yourself even past people that seem as if they got more strength than you. We 
sometimes allow our bodies to tell our minds what our own bodies can and can't do but our very own mind have the ability to tell our bodies what to do even when our bodies feel as if we can't do it your body does not have control over your mind has anyone in this place ever thought themselves sick you ever called out of work and said that I'm sick knowing you weren't sick but then you convince yourself even while you were home that you're really sick your body can't tell your mind what your body can do it's your mind that tells your body what your body can do motivate yourselves with your mind regardless of where you find yourself as long as you push with your mind and say that yes I know that my body says that I can't do this I'm still gonna push my body to do it I'm gonna be motivated to push my body past its limits ain't no one gonna make it to that pool before me if this can change me getting in that pool changes my circumstance stop relying on men to help you be in position to receive your blessing see what discouraged this man here is what most of us in this most believers fall victim to when it's called a system the system says that whoever gets there first is the one that will be healed there are certain systems that are even in place amongst our very own day-to-day -day living some of us we get discouraged by the system even when it comes to looking for a job when something is posted about a job and it says that you must be qualified or have these qualifications we get discouraged by the system I cannot apply for this job because I do not have my BA and we get discouraged by the system because someone else has their bachelors we sit there and tell ourselves that we cannot make it or this person will get it over me because there are restrictions in the system but when Jesus shows up in your life you're not limited by the system because guess what when the when Jesus showed up while the system said whoever gets in the pool first Jesus asked the man do you want to be made well do you want to be made well and Jesus's response was not get in the pool first but he said immediately he did not even have to lay his hands on him he said you have been bound by this system for so long that when I show up that it does not matter what the qualifications say it does not matter what the stipulations are that we will override the system when I show up that when the system says that you are not educated enough to get a job when the system says that I shouldn't have this collar on because I had did not go to, 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 to some seminary or have a doctorate or whatever it may be that when Jesus this shows up that we bypass the system we can't get discouraged by the system any longer when we have Jesus living within us we can't allow the world to dictate and tell us what we can and can't do there's no way that the world can tell a believer what a believer can and can't do Jesus tells the world what the world can and can't do and because Jesus lives within us we tell the world what the world can and can't do stop relying on the system but watch this Jesus said to him in verse 8 take up your bed and walk Jesus said to him man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God 
So we cannot find ourselves as believers looking towards the system. But we have to find ourselves as believers running towards the word. Running towards the word of God, whatever God has to say about our life, whatever God has to say about our situation, that is the only thing that dictates what we can and can't do. The life of a believer is formulated and based upon the word of God. The word of God is what brings life to the believer, not the system, not our bodies. Believers look towards a word of God. This is why you are here Sunday after Sunday, Tuesday after Tuesday to hear God speak to you. We can't even be so comfortable with even, even, even the laying of hands taking place in the house of God. Because the, 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 the laying of hands and, and things of this nature does not even override the word of God that comes out of his mouth. So some of us, we, we miss the word and look for a, 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 a man of God to touch us. For a man of God to do something to us, to, to pour oil over our head when we're missing the very things that God has spoken to us. And then when God shows up and he speaks... And we are given life because of the word that was spoken to us. Because of the command or instruction that was given to us. Something has to happen. The man did not only get up and walk. But he got up and walked and carried the very thing that was carrying him. The very own bed that he had to lie on to make himself comfortable he had the power to get up and carry that very thing that was carrying him when God speaks to you and speaks to your situation you have the power to to have authority to to now carry the very thing that was hindering or binding you what you became comfortable in with your particular mess or circumstance you now have control over so he told him to get up, take your bed, and walk. The strange thing about coming to church and church folks is that when God does something for someone, that everyone's not happy about it. I guarantee that something has happened, someone has been healed, someone has been delivered. I guarantee that something has happened within this very own ministry. And someone within this very own ministry had a problem with what happened here. With what God did. It could be for a variety of reasons. They could have said that, why couldn't it have been me first? It shouldn't have been done like that. I don't believe that a man has the power to touch someone and they're healed. Everything that happens to you and for you, everyone around you would not be happy about it. The scripture says that as the man took up his bed and walked, that the Jews had a problem with it. They did not rejoice because someone was healed, but they had a problem because something happened on the Sabbath. Because he picked up his bed and walked on the Sabbath. Everyone around you is not happy for what God is doing in your life. Be careful of those religious individuals. 
those individuals that hold to law as opposed to presence and power. Presence and power always overrides law. So when the man takes up his bed and walk, some Jewish religious people, they have a problem with it. They asked him, who was the man that said, take up your bed and walk? The religious leaders asked. And the man replied that, I don't know. He could not say it was Jesus. He says, I don't know the one who, who healed me. There are many of us in this very own place. Jesus has done some things for us. And we did not give him credit because he, we were not aware that he did it. So today I'm here to remind each and every one of you that the only reason why you've made it this far because it was Jesus. Don't think that you are too qualified to receive any job. Don't think that you know too much of the word to receive a collar or don't think that you've done anything in and of yourself. Even the very own doctors that have healed you don't even give credit to them. But it was Jesus. When the very own doctors told you that you wouldn't be able to walk that whatever sickness that you had that it wouldn't be cured when they told you that you're not qualified for whatever it may be when they told you that you can't be a homeowner when they told you that you can't be a car owner that the only reason that you bypass the circumstances and the situations that the world and how man has tried to place you in a box the only reason why you're here the only reason why you're even in this place today the very own reason why you woke up this morning is because it was Jesus we can't become so big headed we can't become so big minded that we forget who he is that we forget what he's able to do that we forget what he's capable of doing on a day to day basis no he does not watch over us this week and then next week he does something else or he blesses us every month or every year it's every day the only reason why we're here at this very moment Moment. the only reason why we have breath in our lungs the only reason why you have a roof over your head the only reason why you have clothing on your back the only reason why you have a dollar in your pocket because it was Jesus the only reason why you can bypass whatever the doctor said to you the only reason why you have a husband or wife in your life the only reason why you have a sound mind the only reason why you're able to take a step every day is because of Jesus no other reason this man looked for a man to put him in the pool every day his circumstance did not change even when angels watch this even when angels even when angels showed up his circumstance did not change Jesus himself had to show up in order for his circumstance to be changed angels the host of heaven angels angels the very own angels showed up and they could not help this man This man, 38 years, was dealing with something. Angels showed up. He looked for men day to day. D. 
the only thing, the only person that has the power to change your situation, to change your circumstance, to change your lifestyle. We cannot find ourselves looking for man. We can't even find ourselves calling upon angels, but we must ask for Jesus to show up. There's no chance today that we sing about God's presence. Because without his presence, it doesn't matter who else is there. Nothing will happen. Don't even ask for Apostle Nigel London to do something for you without the presence of God. No minister, no pastor, no archbishop, chief apostle, who, regardless of who it is, they can't do anything for you without the presence of God. It's either Jesus or nothing. Even when we think a man helped us with something, we have to realize that it was always Jesus always always it does not matter what it is it's only because of Jesus so today as you stand today as you stand I stand to remind you to never forget your foundation to never forget that regardless of what you're going through regardless of what you're faced with regardless of who you may even think has given you a helping hand that it was always Jesus That even when you didn't know it was him, it was him. Even when you couldn't thank him when you didn't know, it was still him. Even when we were too ignorant enough to realize who it was, it was still him. In all things, in all things we got to give thanks to the Lord we don't come here in this house to get big headed with revelation But sometimes a pastor has to come in and lead you. We have to remember who it is. As I stood and declared over this house that it is our time, that it is our season to take over this city. The only way that we can do this is if we bring Jesus with us. Praise even when you don't feel like it. Praise Him. Praise Him. See, the strange thing about God is that even when we don't recognize or realize it's Him, don't take offense, but even when we're sometimes too stupid to realize when we're in the presence of God, because this man, Jesus showed up and he called him Sir, thinking he was an ordinary man. 
and even after he got healed he still thought it was an ordinary man but Jesus came back to remind him of who he was and it was Jesus it was always him it's always been about him praise your Lord and you will be surrounded by his presence and as we go forth to take over this city carry the presence of God with you and his power will be made manifest in your life in this ministry in this city and across the nation yes your presence I know that it's customary that we have intercession then praise and worship and the word then there's offering and the benediction if we give one but God could never get enough of praise I love it when my wife tells me I'm handsome and I I look good and I'm a great father and a great husband I love that I can hear it every day 24 hours a day God feels the same way so before we worry about offering we can still praise him right now you can praise him when you know it's always him see the funny thing about praising God and knowing it's always him that even when you're even when you're sick it's always him even when you don't have your stuff together it's always him because sovereignty says that I am I know all things that will take place I'm aware of everything that will happen to you and it's either I allow it or I allow someone else to do it the enemy cannot touch you unless God gives him permission so even then it was always him It's always him and I encourage you today that when you come forth to give your tithe offering seed whatever it may be for those of you that may not have what you're accustomed to have and what you even think that you may have it's him No need to get down about what you do have and what you don't have but as long as you're in the presence of God you will always have more more than what you even think you need so if anybody in this place believe that God is here and you need God to meet a need of yours meet him at this altar right now 
if you need God to do I don't care what it is whatever it may be if you need God to do something in your life right now and you believe that he's here meet him right here I do not have to lay my hands on you but God is saying all he has to do is speak a word to you today and your situation will be changed yet this shall be a shift in your life there shall be a change in your life get ready for a new season get ready for an upgrade right now in the name of Jesus God wants to do something right now and all he wants to do is speak to his people he wants to speak to you right now today in the name of Jesus yes he is here meet him right now meet him right now cry out for him when he asks you what do you need tell him what you need and he will speak to you yes he is able 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 God, you're able, you're able, you're able because you're here, meet the needs of your people this very moment, meet the needs of your people this very moment, Father, yes, God, hear their cry right now, 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 as the scripture says, as the man responded to Jesus, the next verse says, immediately he was made well. So God immediately rushed into their lives, rushed into their situation, rushed into their circumstance, whatever they need right now. Immediately do it, Father. Immediately, immediately do it, God. Do it right now. Do it right now. We call for a right now blessing, an immediate blessing in the name of Jesus. Immediately do it. Immediately, Father. Immediately do it right now, God. Do it right now, God. Yes, Father. Do it now. 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 of the text says that as Jesus met the man back in the temple as Jesus met the man back in the temple he was able to identify who it was that healed him So today you will not leave this place not knowing who did it for you. You will leave this place knowing that Jesus showed up on your behalf. You will leave this place giving God the glory. Not Pastor Reginald Williams, but you will give God the glory for what he did. You now have authority to take up what you were comfortable with. You now have control and authority over what bound you. So as you walk, take up whatever was holding you back and carry. 
carried in Jesus name in Jesus name as you take your seat give God the glory and the praise that he deserves <laughs>